Hey everyone, welcome back. Ready for a deep dive into something pretty amazing. We're going to be looking at how technology, specifically mm -hmm. smart home tech, is really making a difference in the lives of people with autism, helping them live more independently. And, you know, we love to get into the nitty gritty here. So we've got some really insightful firsthand accounts we'll be diving into. Yeah. And what I find really interesting is how this technology can be so personalized, you know, because autism is a spectrum, right? What works for one person might not work for another. So it's not a one size fits all kind of thing. Right. Totally. So for those of us who maybe aren't as familiar with autism, what are some of those core challenges that this technology is trying to address? What are the pain points, so to speak? Well, imagine, like just for a second, feeling constantly bombarded by sensory input, like flickering lights, loud noises, scratchy fabrics, things that most people can tune out. Now, add to that the difficulty of navigating a world that isn't always predictable or routine oriented, and you start to get a glimpse into the daily life for many on the autism spectrum. Wow. Okay. Yes. Yeah, structure, routine, clear communication. Mm -hmm. Those are all things that a lot of us probably take for granted. So that's where this smart tech starts to come in, right? Exactly. What if your environment could basically anticipate your needs, like minimize that sensory overload and maximize comfort? That's the kind of potential we're talking about with a smart home, especially for someone with autism. And we're not talking about some crazy futuristic tech here, right? Right. We've got smart speakers like what? Amazon Echo, mm -hmm. Google Home. Those, those are already in so many homes. Exactly. But for someone with autism, these aren't just like cool gadgets, you know, they can have a real impact on their quality of life. In fact, one of the people we read about even talked about how life changing a smart air fryer was like who knew an air fryer could be a game changer. Right? Seriously. OK, so an air fryer making a difference. That's a great example. But let's break it down a little bit more. How does a smart home actually translate into a more structured, supportive environment for someone with autism? OK. So let's say someone really thrives on predictability. Their lights automatically adjust to their preferred schedule. The temperature stays consistent no matter what it's like outside. Maybe even having doors lock automatically at a certain time for that extra sense of security. Wow. So the home itself is almost like the source of comfort and civility. <laughs> exactly. And then think about someone who might have challenges with verbal communication. Smart speakers with their voice activated commands can be huge. It lets them interact with their environment without all the frustration of, like, switches or buttons. Right, right. And that goes back to what you were saying before about this tech being tailored to really specific needs. But it doesn't stop there, does it? Mm -hmm. What about safety? Especially for families who might worry about their loved ones wandering, for example. Oh, absolutely. That's where things like door sensors and security cameras can be game changers, right? You get the peace of mind knowing you'll be alerted if a door opens unexpectedly. But your loved one still has that sense of independence and freedom within their home. So it's about creating a safe space that encourages independence, not dependence. I love that. Yeah. But I'm also curious. We've talked a lot about smart homes. But what about tech outside the house? It's not all just about the home environment, right? Yeah. There's got to be more to explore there. Oh, for sure. I mean, there's a whole world of assistive tech out there that can make a huge difference. Yeah, like those visual timers we were reading about. Yeah. Time can be kind of a tricky concept for anyone, but especially for someone with autism, right? It's abstract. Totally. So visual timers, they make it concrete. You're not just hearing five more minutes. You're actually seeing those minutes tick by. Yeah. It can really help reduce anxiety and make transitions smoother. Right. Yeah. Like it just clicks, you know. And that actually reminds me of another communication tool we touched on earlier, those assistive communication apps. What makes those so powerful? Yeah. Well, imagine wanting to communicate something like a need or how you're feeling, but the words just aren't there. These apps can give a voice literally and figuratively, to those who might struggle to express themselves verbally. Wow. So it's not just about relying on spoken words, which we know can be tough for some people, but having this other avenue to get their point across. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. But then there are times when communication isn't the primary challenge, right? What about safety and understanding behavior patterns? Like, how can wearable tech help with that? Oh, absolutely. We've all heard of those GPS trackers, right? Peace of mind for caregivers, especially if there's a chance of someone wandering. But some of this wearable tech goes way beyond just location. Okay, so what else can these wearables do? I'm really interested now. So think about this. A device that can pick up on those subtle changes, right? Like heart rate, sleep patterns, even just really small variations in how someone moves. These things can actually be early signs of, like, 
anxiety, sensory overload, even a meltdown about to happen. It was like an early warning system, but not just for where someone is, but for how they're feeling too. That's a great way to put it. Having access to that kind of information can be huge for both the individual and their caregivers. You can start to see what their triggers are, anticipate those challenging moments, maybe even come up with some coping strategies beforehand. That's incredible. It seems like we're on the verge of some really amazing breakthroughs. Speaking of breakthroughs, I got to ask about virtual reality. It's everywhere these days. But what about using it to help those with autism? VR is proving to be so valuable, you know, especially for things like social skills training. It's like a safe space to practice real life situations. Oh, I see. Like a dress rehearsal for life. Yeah, exactly. So you can work on stuff like ordering food at a restaurant or taking public transportation, but without all the pressure and sensory overload of actually being out in the world. Right, right. And because it's virtual, there's no fear of judgment. You can make mistakes, try again, and build that confidence over time. Exactly. And that feeling, that confidence, that self-efficacy, it can carry over into other parts of life, too. It's about empowering people to navigate the world on their own terms, you know? Seriously. It's amazing to think about how far things have come. And like you said, we're really just getting started. So what's next? What does the future hold for technology and autism? Well, imagine a world where technology doesn't just assist, but truly personalizes learning. Okay, now you got me really curious. How so? Well, picture this. AI-powered educational software that can actually adapt in real time to a student's unique learning style. It could identify their strengths, you know, may maybe even offer more challenging material, but then also provide extra support in areas where they might be struggling a bit. So no more one-size-fits-all classrooms. It's like having a customized education plan for every student. That's amazing. What about sensory processing? Are there any cool advancements on the horizon in that area? Oh, definitely. This is where it gets really interesting. Researchers are looking into these advanced sensory devices, like clothing or even implants, that could give someone real-time feedback about their sensory environment. Wait, hold on. Like, What kind of feedback are we talking about? Well, imagine something that could sense changes in light, sound, even air pressure, and then it could actually adjust those things to create a more comfortable sensory experience for that person. Wow, that sounds like something straight out of a movie. But it's also incredibly exciting to think about. To be able to minimize those sensory overload moments, that could be life-changing. It really could. But, you know, as technology keeps advancing, it's important to remember the bigger picture, too. Like, how do we make sure everyone has access to this tech? And what about the ethics of, say, manipulating someone's sensory input? These are conversations we need to be having now. That's a really good point. It's not just about having cool gadgets. It's about using them thoughtfully and responsibly. So it's about giving individuals with autism, their families, and caregivers the information they need to make informed decisions, right? Exactly. It's about creating a future where technology is a tool for greater understanding, independence, and inclusion. Absolutely. I think that's a great place to wrap things up. We've covered some amazing ground today, and it's clear that technology has the potential to make a real difference in the lives of those with autism. But more than that, it sparked a conversation, and that's what we really want to encourage here. So we'll leave you with this. If you could design a piece of tech to help someone with autism live a more fulfilling and independent life, what would it be and why? Let us know your thoughts. You can find us on all the socials. And don't forget to check out the show notes for links to all the resources we talked about today. Until next time, stay curious.